he passed away from pancreatic and uh, uh, liver cancer. And I, I read that you said his passing uh, was really allowed you to uh, gain perspective, see the big picture. Well, what my, what my, about that? Well, my dad was 56. He was far too young. I was, uh, I was 30, 30 years old when, uh, when he passed. I just turned 30. And, uh, you know, I looked back on it and I said, my dad sort of lived for what I did. That was, I was sort of, my sister, I think, got the short end of the stick. She sort of was in the background and uh, uh, my dad spent his time with me. And uh, my mother was great. She was very supportive. And as was my sister. My sister was never jealous. She was terrific, still is. And uh, uh, we sort of uh, uh, spent our time together, grew together, uh, and, and I felt like you know, I wanted to be the best I could be, but I don't think when my I found when my dad passed that I'd really give him my best. What? Uh, I, well, I think I, I think I could have played a lot better. I could have worked harder. I think you could always work harder. I mean, did I work hard? Yes. But did, could I have worked harder? Yes. And uh, when he passed, I said, "Oh, here, here he is. I've, I'm just at the start of my career, and yet my father's gone. Who really was what he he he, he is what he lived for, and so." Uh, I sort of rededicated myself a little bit that year and uh, sort of, I think my golf game was kind of shabby actually, and in my opinion, uh, you know, although, I, although I probably, I don't remember, but I probably won several tournaments. But uh, I got back in 1970 and then I, I won the British Open that year at St. Andrews and uh, that was sort of saying, eh, Dad, I, I think I made you proud here. So that was good. Why have you said you don't think you fully matured until he passed away. Well, I don't think that I don't think anybody. I, uh, I don't think anybody ever really reaches their potential. If you ever reach your potential, you can only go downhill. So, I've always felt like no matter what I've done all my life, I've tried to climb a mountain. And when and I said, you know, maybe I, by my dad's passing, uh, uh, it allowed me to sort of uh, uh, grow up in some ways and say. Uh, you really, you really sort of goofed off here. You didn't really work as hard as you should. If you thought maybe your dad would be around for a long time to share this with you, and you could share it with him, but you know, I, I mean, I played golf for a long time as, as it relates to playing playing tournament golf. But uh, still, um, I would have liked to have concentrated a little bit of it earlier with him. What do you remember from your dad's pharmacies? Well, I remember that I didn't like them. And what I Why mean, not? Well, because from the time I was 10 years old, I worked at them. Oh, okay, you got it. <laughs> Every time I hated, I hated Christmas holidays and summer, because that's I was I was in while all my friends were out playing, I was in in there being a stock boy or doing working in the drugstore or, or became, I became an uh, apprentice pharmacist. I went to college to be. But a I was going to say you went to the, your first oh, three yeah. years at college were studying yeah, my first three years for, for pharmacy. But anyway, that's okay. Uh, and, and, but, but but I spent the time. Then my dad finally figured out that uh, I had a little bit of talent playing golf. So we started, we'd start getting off at four o'clock in the afternoon type thing and we'd go play golf. Of course, in Ohio back in, in those days, it was light till 9.30 at night. So, you know, you, we, we, had, we could play 18 holes and do whatever we want and still had a pretty good, pretty good day of golf. And, and, I, and I, you know, I, I was like a lot of kids. I said, well, my dad was a pharmacist. Why wouldn't I be a pharmacist? I would follow my dad's footsteps. My dad was my best friend and my idol. And, you know, I just sort of wanted to follow after, after my dad. So, and then he talked, he talk, after three years of college, he talked me out of being a pharmacist. I was getting ready to go to, go to pharmacy school. And uh, he, uh, he said, Jack, you can't use your golf behind a counter. He says, I don't think it's the best place for you to be. And he said, so I, I went over and I switched over to the business school. And of course, uh, then I went about a business, year and a half at the business school and, and, and turned pro. And I never, I didn't, I didn't have finish. And I had plenty of hours to finish, but because I didn't have the right combination of courses, but I went and played golf. And, uh, you know, I kind of I kind of liked that. I really enjoyed it. I had a good time. And I found that uh, it was something that I did reasonably well and something that uh, was very rewarding. Uh, I was able to provide, I mean, from the day I got married, which uh, Barb and I were 20 years old when we got married, uh, the day we got married, I got off my dad's back. And, uh, you know, he had, my wedding present was a I think it was a $1,200 down payment on a house because he hated rent. He hated renting houses, 
And so I think he, he gave me that as, as a down payment. And that was the last thing I got from my dad from ever. And, uh, but he always was my mentor no matter what. How do you think he impacted how you've been as a father? Well, I think that uh, he impacted a lot my mother and I think Barbara's parents impacted a lot. Barbara's parents, they, uh, they had good values and they, you know, they, they uh, I mean, Barb's father never made more than $6,000 a year in his lifetime teaching school, yet she never wanted for anything. Her father put away a dollar a week the day she was born for her wedding. Now we went to Scioto Country Club, which is not a cheap place. We had a wedding with 500 people that he paid for with a dollar a week from the time she was born. That's pretty neat.